Hey guys, my name is Grumble Duke, and I'm here with a second Dota 2 tutorial for Cheese Toasty and video games. Um, to anybody who missed part one, I think it is only fair to mention that I am absolutely not a pro at this. Um, these videos are designed largely for the newbies. Uh, and on that point, I did just want to say one thing. This is for newbies, spelled N-E-W-B. Uh, people who want to learn, um, people who've just started playing, and it is not for noobs, spelled N-O-O-B-S. Uh, these are people who are whining, whiny, screaming, rage-quitting idiots. Not interested in them. It's a very important difference in Dota. Um, if you're playing with noobs, you'll get a fun game. Even if you lose, you'll get a chance to show off your own skills a little bit. If you're playing with noobs, then everybody has a horrible time. It really is that simple. So, on with the fun. So, in the first part of these tutorials, we were basically covering a lot of the most important map features in the game, and there were just a couple more of those that I wanted to go over before we get into any of the real more gameplay stuff. Um, the very first thing is runes, such as this one clear. here. Um, now, runes spawn every minute, so whenever that gets to something zero zero, uh, either this point in the river or this point in the river, um, which is why I've got some wards up here to see where they appear. Uh, and there are various different runes and they do various different things so I'm going to cut together some footage now so you can see them all in action. This one here the to start planes. off with is an illusion rune which does this. Illusion. Then we have the invisibility rune right here which does this. I have their scent. Invisibility. The haste rune which is really fun on this hero because the faster you're going the more damage you do which does this. Haste. Look there. The uh, wonderful Quake tribute, the double damage rune. Double Quake, damage. Unreal Tournament, everything has this. And I think this one does deserve a little bit of demonstration. Doing massive damage now with that. So you can imagine if you get this early on in the game, even though you might not be doing that much damage to enemy heroes yet, you can last hit very easily. And you would not believe how many times I have had to rampant. wait around and respawn the runes in order to get this last one. I don't know why it just wasn't appearing. Um, but this is a regen rune. It regenerates your health and your mana to maximum over a period of time. Unfortunately, mine are on maximum, so it's not really going to do anything there. But you can imagine, if you one come across that on like running away from a, an attempted kill on you, when you've got no health, no mana, that can turn the game around. So runes are obviously a great way to get a bit of an edge over your opponents in your lane um, or to help set up a really nasty gank. But another very, very important part of the Dota map are the neutral camps. Uh, now these are basically neutral creeps, they don't belong to either side, so anyone can kill them. Um, and killing these rather than the creeps in lane basically gives you a bit of a golden XP advantage. If you've got a partner back in the lane who's killing all those creeps, you're out killing these ones. You're each getting your own experience very 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 useful and they range from small camps like that one that Between I just the killed planes. there um, up to kind of medium large ones such as that um, and there are also two ancient creep camps on the map um, which contain much bigger creeps I think the main one of these camps gives you a hundred gold when you kill it and you can imagine that is a great way to supplement everything that's going on in lane now another very useful thing about the neutral camps is that with some of them, if you do it at the right time, you can actually pull them into your own creeps um, and that can help you in a variety of ways. If you look on the bottom lane now you'll see that our lane is quite pushed out. It's got all the way, well, almost all the way up to the enemy tower. That will mean that the enemy would What's be getting very focus? easy farm. Uh, we'd be finding it very hard and we'd be at danger of getting killed. So one way to force the lane back near your own tower is to do this. If you pull this camp out um, or this camp on the dire side at 15 or 45 seconds and run straight in the path of your own creeps um, the neutrals will follow you and end up getting killed by your creeps who will then appear a little bit later than they otherwise would have um, and the enemy creeps will be able to push a little bit further down the lane. Now one way to make that particular process even better is to double stack the creep camp before you do it. Now the mechanics of double stacking are quite simple um, the way that the creep, stamp, the creep camps spawn is that whenever this hits zero, 0 if this area is empty, or the area around the camp, it will spawn a new set of creeps, like here we've got a bunch of ogres. Now you can take advantage Correct. of that by aggroing them at about 53 seconds, Upon and then pulling them away 
from uh, their location. And what will happen then, hopefully, if I've got it right this time, yes. is they'll be out of the creep camp when it hits zero zero, and another creep camp will spawn behind them. Yep, there we go. So now we've got some uh, wolves as well. Now what that lets you do is if I now pull this double stack into the wave. Okay, I messed that up the first time. But now here again, if we pull this into the wave, your top tower is under attack. Then what will happen is when these creeps get pulled up to fight them, hopefully all of our Your creeps here run, run, run. are actually going to die. Now this actually gives you a massive advantage in the lane, because so your opponents you. are not getting the gold or the experience they would Your get for killing these creeps. Um, now if this were a proper match this wouldn't be a very good time to do it, because the enemy are here attacking that tower. But um, as a general Your principle all of these kills attack. here are denied experience for the enemy. Um, and if you keep doing this throughout early and mid game, you can end up with a five level advantage over your laning partners, your laning opponents rather. It is incredibly useful. Now the last very important part of the map that I want to talk about is Roshan, um, this big bad boy here. Uh, very very powerful enemy uh, neutral creep, the most powerful on the map. Uh, generally requires a full team to kill him except in very special circumstances, certain hero combos that can, uh, that can take him on quite easily. Um, now the advantage to killing Roshan is that you get this item here, the Aegis of the Immortal. Um, that is incredibly useful if you can read it on the bottom of the screen there. Um, basically whoever picks it up, when they die, five seconds later they will respawn with full health and full mana uh, wherever it is that they died, basically. Um, so in effect it gives you six heroes for a team fight because if that person dies they're going to come back again five seconds later and rejoin the fight. Um, obviously attacking him can be a bit dangerous if the other team sees you do it and comes to attack you. Um, but I'm just going to skip forward a little bit and find and show you exactly what the Aegis does. Okay, I'm pretty sure it is in this team fight that I end up dying um, and therefore the Aegis gets, gets used. Um, as you can see we've got a big group of people coming in here. I end up getting killed and you see this yellow shiny stuff, there's a, a little gravestone there. I come back. Uh, now I don't get a death for that, the enemy doesn't get a kill and it looks like this time it didn't enable us to turn the team fight around but it did enable us to me to get away oh and it looks like the team fight is just going to happen over here and it got turned around fine that's nice to see cool well that's it for map features uh, for this episode there are just a couple of utility things I want to get over with quickly because uh, we don't have any nice music. Can anybody else hear that? It's a it's a massive absence to me. It, it feels wrong. Um, but anyway, a couple of very quick utility things I just want to go over with you guys um, just to help you get better at Dota, basically. The first one is that you might find it very useful to watch your old games. Um, I know I do. It could just be five minutes where there was a team fight and you know you were trying to predict what the enemy were doing but you couldn't see them and you want to know whether you were right. Um, if you go onto your profile by clicking on your name or, or somebody else's name if you want to watch their games um, and then you click view all games um, here's mine let's pick a random one you'll get this screen um, and if the match was fairly recently I'm not entirely sure what it is maybe a week or two then you'll be able to download the replay normally happens very very quickly there we go and then you can watch it, um, just like you were spectating another game. Um, you can skip through the uh, controls here. In fact, I'm not going to go over the controls because if you guys watch me during these tutorials, um, you'll you'll see me doing all the the skip forward, skip back stuff like that. And if somebody else is playing a game and you want to watch that, you can click on their name here. And if they are playing a game, there'll be a uh, watch game uh, logo, logo, whatever. Um, the other thing, which is very important, are builds. Um, now builds are basically, when you're playing a game, um, this is very useful especially when you're starting out and you don't know the items very well. It's a list of suggested items and suggested abilities which will be there automatically in your heads up display. Um, now you can make your own builds um, by doing this. You can pick a hero. I, I've genuinely never played Chaos Knight so I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you can add an item build, 
you can divide the items however you want. I, as I said, I have no idea what I'm doing here. You can do an ability build, which basically is just saying what level you should get what ability at. Um, and then that will show up in yellow whenever you get, uh, well, whenever you go up a level. Uh, whatever, and then you can save it. Oh, come now. Is that really necessary? You can save it. And then if you start a game... All and pick that character... Uh, you then click this button here, which is the build menu. If you click here, you'll see a bunch of recommended Chaos Knight Prepare or whoever builds. Probably much better than my one. Um, but I can s you can select any that you've made here, click OK. And now every time you level up, it'll highlight in yellow what you're supposed to get on that level. And in the shop, it'll have all of the items that you recommended uh, arranged here in whatever rank you put them in. Um, so that is incredibly useful if you don't want to be thinking about oh what item am I going to get next, oh no what am I going to do, oh no I don't know what abilities to get or what I'm doing and you can also even write little uh, tool tips which, which would show up here where you can write down to remind yourself if there's anything about them that you want to remember um, so say use chaos strike on enemy casters I could have that written at the bottom there if it was something I was worried I was going to forget so, uh, one other thing that I realized might be really fun to show you guys is um, the cheat feature in Dota. And this can be very fun either just to mess around with or to, um, or if you want to actually test something out but you don't want to have to go through a whole game just to hope that you get into the situation you want to see. So you want to try and fiddle with it a little bit to, uh, to get a certain result. Um, the way to do it is you go to uh, play, you go create lobby here. Um, now, if you want people to join, um, you can set that up as well uh, by, well, very easy. If you're their friend, they'll be able to see your lobby, they'll be able to join it. Um, but for the purposes of this, all I want to show you is, if you see here in the lobby settings, it has cheats, no. So we're going to change that, enable cheats, and we're going to start the game just with me. We're now in as a normal game, who should I go for? Who's good to show all this stuff off? I know, I'll go Lena. What? Okay, what you can do in cheat mode, there are lots of cheats, I'm not going to go over them all, like um, but if you just go onto Google and search Dota 2 cheats, you'll get a massive list with absolutely all of them. Um, but just a few of the, uh, the more common ones. For Say you want to test something late game, you don't actually want to have to play a whole game to get you know up to the stage where you can test out your late game skills. If you type dash, level up, and then whatever you want. 25. I am now level 25 just like that. Um, you can also level up bots, as I said, check out the uh, search on Google to find out the, the controls for the others. Um, you can also, and I've been doing that a lot this episode, spawn the rune. Um, you can give yourself however much gold you want. Oh, well, you can if you know how to spell gold anyway. Oh, okay. Dash, gold, space, and then a number. There we go. Got 15,000 gold now. Um, and one of the most fun ones, and the reason I chose Lena for this, uh, this really has no utility for learning the game, I guess, unless you want to practice one skill. Um, if you do WTF, it sets up a mode where your skills no longer cost mana and no longer have a cooldown. Um, as I said, it's quite hard Inspire to think time. of a situation where this is actually definitively Quick. useful. Um, but it, it certainly can be fun. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's just nip up here and see what I can do to these, this next wave of creeps. If I were these creeps, I would probably it. just turn tail and run right now. Well, that was fun. 
Okay guys, so for the remainder of this video I kind of just want to go over um, some of the different some of the most common classes of hero you're going to get and the first one I want to talk about is the initiator and to show that I'm going to talk about punch um, now the thing about an initiator is you're basically talking about someone who can start a fight very easily just like that Pudge can do it because he's got a hook which can fly out, grab someone and pull it back in um, now just because this didn't go too well for Pudge in the end does not mean it is not still incredibly painful when you get initiated well um, there are various ways it can be done um, wow that was me dying right there a giant cloud of black smoke um, it, there are various ways it can be done, it could just be someone who's very tanky, it could be someone who's got a lot of stuns, it could be someone like Pudge who can pull one of the enemy team out of position. Um, but having an initiator on your team is very important if you want to have any chance in a team fight. Okay guys, uh, next up I'm going to show you a team fight which illustrates quite well uh, the disabler role and the nuker role. Um, now disablers, you can probably imagine, are basically there to um, take out the enemy team without killing them. Uh, so you're talking stuns, silences, anything which kind of traps them. I'm really not sure what's going on with this troll warlord. Okay. Um, now nukers, um, the other one that we'll be seeing in this team fight, are characters which do a very much, a very high amount of damage over a very short amount of time. Um, something's obviously glitched here, but the team fight should still happen. We can see here they've started to initiate. And the first thing that happens is there's a global silence um, cast by Silencer on the Radiant team. Um, that's his ultimate ability, and it stops all of us from casting time for uh, f from casting time for casting spells for a total of six seconds. So that is a very very good way to start a team fight. Um, now at this stage we're probably thinking, oh dear, um, another disable has just been used over here. This time by Lion. Um, he's actually turned one of our one of our heroes into a frog, looks like. Um, now that means that he can't use any of his abilities, uh, can't use any of his items, um, and also will take additional damage, I think. Oh no, doesn't take extra damage, but is, again, just very, very vulnerable right now and can't attack at all. This is another disable, um, and I hope people who are paying attention down here also noticed that Lion used what is known as a nuke. Um, that was a single target nuke. Um, he just cast a very powerful spell on CXC here, which resulted in him losing basically all of his health as soon as the disable had worn off. I'm just going to go back and see if I can find that. He's taking damage, another disable there, a stun. And then that little beam of light took off basically all of his health. And that's what a nuker is. It's a character that can do that and basically turn a team fight around before it begins. Unfortunately for them, what they're now going to encounter is a bunch of AoE damage from Meta here and me on the Dire side. Um, what you've seen there is just his ultimate, which does a giant load of damage and summons these golems, and my ultimate, which does a bunch of damage to strength and agility heroes, which, uh, let's see, agility... Well, I think I landed that pretty well. Um, now this is another kind of nuke, and I think that is probably going to turn this team fight around. Let's have a look. Yep. You'll also have noticed there, um, this. Uh, I've used my disable, which basically traps somebody in a prison for a sh very short duration, uh, while leaving them invulnerable. Um, this can also be cast on enemies and allies, and what I've actually done here is I've cast it on an ally that was very, very, very close to death. Um, and the reason I've done that is it'll save him while uh, for the duration of the spell, and by that time we'll hopefully have chased the enemies off. It can also be used on an enemy, uh, like for example if I hadn't used it I could use it on him now, uh, Silencer here. That would leave him invulnerable for four seconds but unable to move. We could all then catch up and then uh, we'd be in front of him and he'd have nowhere to run to. Um, but just to show you the use it can have on allies, there we go, Metamorphosis still alive. And uh, I believe we now just clean up after this, really. More disables, very good for trying to escape. But it's not going to work. So that was just a team fight that very clearly illustrated the uh, the benefits of having disables and nukes on your team and the difference they can make in a team fight. 
Okay guys, a uh, different match, so we're back at the beginning again and this time I just want to talk to you about uh, the support and the carry roles. Uh, now the support role, uh, we're going to be looking at Narakwil here, playing as Crystal Maiden. The idea behind the support role is you're basically, you're not there to get all the kills, you're not there to get all the experience, you're there to enable other people to. Which is why you just saw Nara, who spent his starting gold, his, his priceless one-of-a-time starting gold on Observe Awards for the benefit of the team, has just placed one of them here and they will be giving us a uh, vision of the rune for the next, for a little while. Um, and that's basically one of the most important roles of support to make sure that everything keeps awarded. There we go. Haste. Um, and then basically that allows your team to get rune control. In lane, um, it depends how hard you want to play the support really, but some things you can do, for example, will be the support would focus on denying your own uh, creeps, whereas the person that they're with could focus on getting the last hits and the actual gold advantage. Um, and that way both of the enemy heroes lose out. Um, your support hopefully doesn't die, but the other team, other person on your team, in your lane, will be getting an awful lot of gold and experience. Okay guys, the final uh, character class we're going to be talking about is the carry. Um, this is a little bit later on in the same match, there's Nara with his Crystal Maiden, and here's me with Viper, who's a very hard carry. Now the idea behind carries is basically, they might not be that good early game, but their abilities, especially with the items they can get, means that they scale very well into late game. Now this isn't the best example of it, because actually a lot of the other people on my team were doing very well as well, so I'm hardly the only hard carry here. Um, but that team fight was just an absolute exercise in we have out-leveled them, Radiance our carries have got fat, and because of that, we just do so much damage when it comes to late game. Now, Naraquil, in fact, I'm going to take that back just to show what the support was doing. So, if we look at Crystal Maiden's spells and abilities, you'll see that a lot of them have um, elements which slow down an enemy. Um, they do do damage, especially the ultimate does a fair bit of damage, um, but they're unlikely to be able to be anything near a nuke or do enough damage to just flat out kill someone one on one late game. Um, so the support's role in a team fight late game is to do things like that, to slow the enemy. Um, they sent their courier out here to die because they'd given up. Like I said, it always it goes terribly when you play against killed. noobs who, who do things like that when they get angry. Um, but as I was saying, Crystal Madal skills very good for helping in a team fight. There's a lot of AoE damage, a lot of AoE slows. Um, if you have a look at Viper, Pretty much every single ability he has is about killing someone very, very quickly. We've got uh, Big Poison over here. Um, this is a passive ability, uh, which basically means you do more damage to your target if um, they are lower on health. And his Q is, again, a single target attack, which poisons and does uh, a slow as well. Um, and again, you can see in this team fight the amount of damage we can dish out because of that, although our support is doing very well as well, is, um, is huge. I got a god like there, um, just on the basis of having a lot of damage. Although that was hardly uh, a pure support role. Nara was doing pretty good there, carry-wise as well. But yeah, that's it for this time, guys. Um, I think we'll probably have maybe one more of these tutorials before we get on to the really fun stuff. Um, but yeah, keep tuning in. Um, subscribe, comment, whatever it is you want to do, and I'll see you next time for more absolutely owning a Dota. Let's see, uh, well, I say that, hopefully. Let's see what happens here. And boom! See you next time, guys.